Alexander Park borders Wally Range, Moss Side and Fallowfield in South Manchester and is a fantastic 60 acre site with playing fields, wooded walks and lakes. After its initial opening in August 1870, it became Manchester's first real people's park, providing a range of facilities that drew in individuals and families from all the surrounding neighbourhoods. From that time, the park has been so many things to an incredibly diverse range of people. There have been Victorian visitors walking its paths in their Sunday best, political rallies in support of the eight-hour day, militant suffragettes campaigning for votes for women, and Manchester's new communities transforming the park with its annual Caribbean carnival. Unfortunately, soon after World War II, Alexander Park suffered decades of decline and in recent years its true potential has been further held back due to a lack of investment. So residents from the local area formed a group whose aim it was to change all that. They campaigned for years and finally by 2012 they had won grants from the Heritage Lottery Fund and Manchester City Council creating a project that brings major improvements to the park. I'd like to know more about the community engagement work that you're going to be doing, please. The Friends of the Park decided to create a permanent symbol to mark the beginning of its regeneration and after consultation settled on the theme of the suffragettes, commissioning a local woodcarver to carry out the work. My name is Andy Burgess, I'm 37 years old and I'm a wood sculptor and I work with chainsaws to create um, all sorts of different things out of trunks of tree and logs and uh, things like that. I've always worked with my hands uh, as a hobby and I've liked you know, being hands-on with things like working with wood or drawing and sketching. But actually about six or seven years ago, my brother Tim, Tim Burgess, who is also a chainsaw wood sculptor, started to tried chainsaw carving for the first time. He also has a background of working with wood and making things like rocking horses. Very quickly he accumulated numerous chainsaws. Because I was working for myself, I've uh, done house renovations and things like that, so I've taught myself to plaster and plumb, and of course my knowledge of woodworking. I was able to um, see how Tim was going and learn from him as well, so I would go to jobs that he had in people's you know, parks or their own house where he was doing a commission for them and I was w watch how he was making things out of the trees and the trunks with these chainsaws. He was able to give me some guidance and it's just gone from there really. And this particular job I'm on now for Alexandra Park and the suffragette theme is um, certainly going to be interesting to look at because it's just completely one-off for me. So um, the best thing for me to do is to draw on lots of themes and uh, ideas that have been put forward from the Friends of the Park, as well as my own um, investigations, if you like. Yeah, it should be yeah. really standalone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or, or it might be on there and then it might be somewhere else as well, mm. you know. Yes, exactly. To reinforce that. Mm. So um, I've got about six or seven images that I want to put onto the tree in various pockets. So I'm just going around the tree now, seeing from my list of images which ones can go where. It's all about your relationship to where you're standing and the way the saw is and the angle that the saw is to the wood that allows you to make various cuts.
Hi there. So um, you're from the same school, aren't you? And how old are you lot? Eight and seven, great. Well, my name is Andy Burgess and I live in Didsbury, just down the road, and I'm a wood sculptor. So uh, I don't take trees down, but I make them into things. Well, this is gonna be staying in the park and it's for a person called Emmeline Pankhurst. She was one of the founder members of the Suffragettes and she was born just over the road in Moss Side. Uh, I've only got two days to do it. I'll show you my chainsaw working and then maybe if you walk around the other side, you'll see some of the ones on the back as well. This particular part of the sculpture is going to be uh, a banner with the words votes for women on it. So um, it's very important that this part of the banner and this part of the sculpture is uh, realistic and smooth. So this particular point here needs to look as though it's one flowing soft piece of material such as a scarf or that type of ribbon. So this is now the finished Emmeline Pankhurst sculpture and uh, I've just got to finally dust it off, get rid of all the sawdust and put some preservative on it. So just to show you here some of the imagery that I've used, this refers to the uh, silver painted pin brooch. It's in the shape of a prison convict's arrow and uh, these pin brooches were specifically marketed at um, ex-suffragette prisoners. We have the, um, the imagery here which is taken from Votes for Women, this was a poster at the time, uh, so it shows a lady um, with the clothing of the time holding up a newspaper. And then here we have a long streaming banner um, with the phrase, Votes for Women, uh, one of the key phrases, of course, of the time. Moving round. At the back here we have uh, a large hammer, these are the uh, toffee hammers. Again, pin brooches with the inscription votes for women along the, uh, the shaft of the hammer. And that was uh, specifically important because uh, these are the hammers that were used for smashing windows, uh, such as I, th I think, believe, uh, may have occurred in Alexandra Park itself. And then finally at the base here, just a sort of flag motif with uh, WSPU, which stands for the Women's Social and Political Union. It's been great working with the Friends of the Park and getting all the imagery and then getting the feedback from the people who are passing through the park, stopping me, chatting, the school kids coming up, and all giving me really positive feedback. So it's one of those jobs where, not, not just this particular sculpture, but my job as a whole, I do get people coming up to me who've perhaps never seen this sort of thing before. And generally, if someone does come up to you, they mainly give you good feedback about what you're doing. So it's a very rewarding job to be in. And of course, I thoroughly enjoy doing what I do and uh, each day is, is totally different.